Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to Monster Camp. So we're on our final date of the series. We're going to be dating Milo today, hopefully, if I choose the right answer. So let's get started. Okay, we're choosing one player, short game. Uh, we're going to skip over all of the stuff at the beginning. I'm going to choose Brian again, but I'm going to call him Hugo because I like that name. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what Milo likes, so I'm just going to choose some random things. There we go. Okay, so going down the line, we've got Joy, we've got Ravi, we've got Calculester, we've got Dahlia, we've got Damien, and then we've got Milo. So Milo is the one that we're going for today. And so it was clear, it all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Which of these animals do you like the most? Um, so I'm, we've had this question before, I'm pretty sure Peacocks is going to be Milo, so I'm going to go with that one. And just in case you're interested, Aravi, Dahlia, Calculester, Joy, and Damien. Hey! Oh, I love peacocks. They're so colourful, so majestic, so regal. Not to mention, they've inspired a lot of great fashion statements and Snapchat filters. Have you taken any good selfies with a peacock filter, Hugo? I have an album of a, pul of a poultry 117 that I like of myself. Oh, we should compare peacock filter albums on our way to camp. We only had three weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts, but as I already said, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Okay. Let's get straight into it. So I'm pretty sure that Milo is going to like creativity, so that's going to be what I'll be aiming for. And maybe charm as well. And they're two of my highest stats, so that's pretty cool. So we'll start with creativity. That day, Monster Scouts, you make each other friendship bracelets. Except the Monster Scout leader pairs you randomly with your friendship bracelet, bracelet recipients. I guess so Larry the Lich doesn't feel left out by having no friends. You get paired with Larry, surprisingly though, he's a great conversationalist and he makes you a super heartfelt bracelet that imbues you with plus two creativity when you wear it. Larry sure is nice, maybe there'll be a day when he's cool enough to be your friend, or at least a romanceable summer fling, fling option, but today is not that day. Later you're with Milo and Damien. You've been trying to sell Monster Scout cook Monster Scout cookies all afternoon. It's not going super Flame great. Me, dude. Hey you, random passerby! Buy these fucking cookies or I'll goddamn murder you in your face! Huh? Oh, Damien, you're vicious but you're passionate. That's what really matters when it comes to sales. Our passion will convince this man to... Oh, he ran away. Oops. After a highly unsuccessful afternoon of cookie selling, you three go back to Scout HQ and report your sales number to coach. <laughs> Hmm, so you kids are saying that you sold negative cookies, as in, you have more cookies now than when you started selling them? Yeah, but it's not our fault. Selling these cookies is impossible. I tried threatening this guy at knife point to buy some, and it didn't even work. I had to stab him. Always believe in yourself. Nothing is impossible for scouts like you. Remember these cookies aren't just a healthy snack, and a way for us to pay for the big rock climbing field trip at the end of summer. They're also a wonderful way to teach you scouts entrepreneurship and problem solving skills. You cookies are smart, so let's talk ideas. You kids are smart, so let's talk ideas. How do we sell these cookies? Like and subscribe. Maybe the issue is brand recognition. Let's focus on social media. I'd like to start a TikTok on behalf of the Scout Cookies brand, and we should obvi improve our dismal SEO. <laughs> Arson! That'll take forever! Let's rob a bank! When we get the, to the vault, we'll take all the cash and leave all the cookies. It's a perfect crime. Then we blow up the bank. Good job! I'm so proud of you, Scouts. 
You're really cooking up an idea, Brainstorm here. And remember, the Scout cookies are made with healthy ingredients. That'll really get people <sighs> to buy them. Oh, Coach, you're well-intentioned men- You well-intentioned mentor figure. I hate to do this, but you're in desperate need of a reality check. No one wants to buy healthy cookies. Millennials killed the sugar cookie industry a while ago, and healthy cookies were hot for a minute, but frankly, they're going out of style with the younger generation. Yeah. Milo's right. The cookies taste horrible. Have you ever looked at the ingredients list? These cookies have fucking carrots in them. Yeah. Coach, I love you, but don't ever try to trick me into eating vegetables, especially not carrots, the least metal vegetable. Hmm. Wow, that was hard to hear. But you kids are my scouts and I value, value your honest feedback. Tell me the truth. How do we get our cookies to appeal to the modern youngsters? Oh, appealing to modern youngsters is your whole thing. Quick, suggest a cookie flavour that's irresistible to Gen Z. Market research shows that the hottest youth trend is getting lost in the wilderness and eating your friend's corpses to survive. Make corpse flavoured survival cookies. Teens nowadays love to eat ass. Ass flavoured cookies are the future. Well, that sounds pretty bold to me, so I'm gonna go with the market research. Fucking hey. metal! Cookies that taste like corpses? That's metal as fuck, Hugo. Hashtag slay. Honestly, I stand the edgy vibe. Mm. And I like the survival angle too. I get lost in the wilderness a lot, and survival is never guaranteed, even if you're half a mile away from society. Damien LeVay, ultimate survivor. When you're out there in the wild, it's just you and your friends against the toughest enemy of all time, motherfucking nature. Amen, Scout, amen. Mother nature deserves our utmost respect. She's a wily one. I'm a pretty hardened survivalist, so I've had to eat my friend's corpses once or twice. I do whatever I have to do to survive. Mm -hmm. But if I had the choice, I'd rather eat a Milo-flavored cookie than Milo's actual decaying flesh. Just cause we're friends. It'd kind of feel wrong. Every moment is beautiful. Damien, that was a beautiful moment of emotional vulnerability. You did such a good job expressing yourself, Bay. And you're totally right. I would also feel kind of weird eating your flesh, even in a survival situation, especially if I didn't have a respectable wine to pair it oh. with. Listen, Scouts, just in case we ever get lost in the wilderness together and I perish in a bear attack, eat my flesh first. You kids have your whole lives ahead of you. But for the moment, flesh cookies it is. This is a new fla this new flavor will get our scout cookies selling like hotcakes. Wait, should we be selling hotcakes? You're trending, darling. No, no, darling. Youngsters loathe hotcakes and oh my god, what if we call the new cookie flavor BFF as in best friend flesh? You're so excited that you spend a few hours whipping a batch of BFF cookies. You flavor the cookies with your own flesh and blood and you have Damien and Milo to try them. Huh, that's pretty damn good actually. Something about the taste of Hugo that's weirdly satisfying. <laughs> I didn't think your flesh would be such an explosion of flavour, Hugo. That's good to keep in mind if you know what I mean. You just turned cookie baking into a strange erotic form of foreplay with your two sexy friends. Nice. Your baking prowess gets you plus two boldness and plus one creativity. How wonderful. Uh, so cool, cool, many choices. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Charm next. It's a typical bloody camp drone battle royale. While you're hiding to catch your, catch your breath, a severed fist flies through the air and lands in your lap. You unfold it. The fist was holding a tarnished silver locket containing the photo of a loved one, likely waiting for the hand's former owner to return home safely. You toss that behind you and also find a crumpled up coupon redeemable for plus two charm at Pedro's Pastrami Paradise. Rad, thanks mysterious hand. Later, you're wandering through camp looking for Milo. Your therapist said you need to spend time contemplating mortality, so hanging out with the Reaper sounds right. Mm, got a gig. Oh, hey. I'd love to chat, Bay, but I've got a gig. Actually, why don't you come along? It's a lovely day for reaping, and you get the privilege of watching me work. 
Oh, hell yeah. Watching Milo lead a soul into the afterlife, that's gotta count as, emo as emotional reflection. You follow Milo to a rotting corpse where the soul awaits. Hello, darling. Hello, little soul. I'm death, but you can call me Milo. Here's the bad news. You're dead. But the good news is... I'm going to take you to the afterlife. Let's go. You, death! You have come for me, but first you must listen to my tale. Tis a tale of woe, of strife, of courtly ambitions. For I, I was the Grand Master of the Mer King. Mm. Oh, another dead person with a tale. They always want to tell you a tale. People just don't respect Reaper's time nowadays, you know? Oh, go ahead, I suppose. I served the vulnerable Mer King as Grand Master. Days ago, the Mer King was attacked in his sleep. He survived, but became obsessed with the idea that the attack had been a coup. He killed me in his paranoia. But I saw the attack with my own eyes. The Mer King was not the victim of a coup. Dite? Coup dite? He was attacked by a vicious beast with the strength of a hundred warriors. The beast, t'was a doggish thing and covered in the thickest fur. And it pissed all over the King's chamber. The room was positively drenched. Strangely enough, the beast seemed to be rather enjoying itself, barking and laughing. I heard tell that it was goaded on by a mysterious spectre. Well, that's another mystery, and to this day I wonder if... Wait, are you even listening to me? This story is gripping. You should be paying attention. What? Oh, of course I wasn't. I wasn't listening. That story was way beyond my attention span. I was trying to figure out why I can't download your soul to my soul transporter app. Hmm. <gasps> That's weird. What if I change the setting? Oh no! Oh god no! This better not be what I think it is. Hey, Grandmaster, by any chance, did you ever trade your soul to a demon? Trade my soul to a demon? Hmm. Hmm. I don't recall. I might have. It sounds like something I would do, but I can't recall the demon. Make some space for Dahlia! That soul belongs to me, baby! Get ready for an eternity of Dahlia! Four years ago, I made a deal with that guy. He swore that I could have his soul when he died for the low price of four Althene Pogs. You know Pogs? Remember Pogs, you guys? Oh, yes! It's all coming back to me now. Great to see you again, Dahlia. I forgot I traded away my soul, but I never forget those bitchin' Alfpogs. They were so sweet. Bah! Such nice pogs. I was entertained by them for like four weeks. Then the trend came and I forgot about them. The next trend came and I forgot about them. But it was totally worth trading my soul. <laughs> OMG, the shenanigans. I can barely cope. Dahlia, I need you to relinquish the soul so I can take it to the afterlife. I refuse to let this affect my rating. <laughs> Sorry, Milo. I traded four whole pogs for that soul. I'm not giving it up unless you give me something better. I'm making my soul army and he's going to be my first soldier. Shit, looks like Milo needs to wrestle this soul from Dahlia's de demonic grip. Bargain with Dahlia and get this sexy reaper that recently deceased soul. The recently deceased soul that they deserve. Okay. Psh, why worry about one pathetic little soul when you can trade it for an entire soul album? That's pretty creative, I would think. Or fun. Uh, how about 20 elf pogs make it rain in pogs in here? That sounds like fun, so I'm gonna go with soul album. Yes. An entire soul album? Whoa! That's gonna contain like 30 or 40 souls at least. Let me see it. You whip out one of the 40 Aretha Franklin CDs that you literally always carry with you. You grab your fave album, Who's Zooming Who, and hand it over to Dahlia. Mm. Whoa, it's heavy. I can really feel all the souls inside, but wait, who's Aretha Franklin? Some sort of soul harvester? Hmm. Uh, yeah, she's a legendary soul harvester among the Reapers, that's why everyone calls her the Queen of Soul. Wait, the Queen of Soul? Shouldn't that be the Queen of Souls? If she harvested a ton of souls? Oh wait, I think I get it. She probably just harvested one huge powerful soul, right? Huh? 
Sure, yeah, definitely, and you know how souls are, they vary in size and power and combine and recombine, it's all a mess, but, but Aretha really whipped them into shape. <gasps> that totally makes sense! Uh, gotta go! In that case, I'm not gonna stick with one measly loser soul when I could have this whole album by the Queen of Soul herself. Let's trade. Long live Aretha. Dahlia hands over the Grandmaster's soul. Milo pops it into their Yves Saint Laurent soul reaping tote. And you two totally enjoy a nice stroll while leading the soul to the afterlife. I don't know why I added like reallys and totallys and berries, but just go with it. <laughs> Since you helped them finish this gig so quickly, you two take an extra time to sit on a cliff and hold hands. It's romantic AF. By the way, I didn't mention it at the beginning of this, but Milo has they, them pronouns, so that's why they are referred to as them and they. Life, it's so beautiful. Mm, this atmosphere, it's calm, quiet, beautiful. I can feel myself blooming, you know. I'm happy as a peony in a spring, and the sunset is particularly emotional today. We should do a collab. Thanks for helping with the gig, Hugo. I don't know what I would have done if Dahlia had kept that soul, but you were right there when I needed you, weren't you? You slowly pull out your Walkman and lean in for an ultimate romantic move, sharing earbuds with your crush. Earbuds with your crush. Milo hesitates but accepts the left earbud. That's the horniest one. Wow, she really was the Queen of Soul, huh? I'm just happy that you always carry around these Aretha Franklin albums around with you. They really come in handy. You spend the rest of the afternoon listening with, listening to music with Milo is tranquil and rejuvenating. Plus, Aretha's high notes are so powerful they give you plus two charm and plus one fun. Eat. Okay, time to go to the campfire. Tonight will be the night of the living dead. <laughs> so Milo is with Dahlia again. Cool. You're searching the campfire for drop s'mores you can eat. When you run into Dahlia and Mila, both crowded around Dahlia's face. Have no fear. Dahlia is here. So, as I was saying, I had to conquer the kingdom in the fourth circle of hell. They insulted me by being a kingdom that exists that I don't rule. Duh. When life gives you lemons. That makes perfect sense. It's like I always say, keep your friends close and hold your enemies like a baby bird that you can crush in your hand with one careless move. <sighs> So after I slaughtered their royal family and claimed the throne, I decimated half the population. It's a fun way to encourage obedience to my wrath. But here's the weird part. I tweeted about the whole thing on Hell Twitter, and I'm getting replies calling me a violent tyrant who is totally evil and not even cool. And apparently there's some kind of hashtag trending about it. I keep seeing hashtag blue scourge of death, hashtag Dahlia scandal, hashtag fourth circle burning. Oh dear, well, you've come to the right place. They don't call me the Feed Doctor for nothing, Dahlia. What exactly did you tweet? This is a takeover! Four circle losers, I killed half your people! Ha ha ha! Welcome to the role of my Iron Fist population you! Hashtag violent, hashtag violent, hashtag ha ha! Oh. Dahlia, this is tot- this is a total emergency. You hashtag like a- Boomer. Oh, and the rest of it's pretty bad optics, too. <gasps> Fascinating. I never considered the optics of conquering a kingdom, but now that you mention it, I know exactly what to do. <laughs> Find and murder everyone who tweeted anything even slightly critical of me. I shall drink the blood of what I can only assume from the profile picture is a legion of anime girls. Listen, Dahlia, I really do understand how you feel because I am a true empath, but understand that it understands literally every possible emotion. But I'm afraid this is a little more complicated than just murdering a few non cams We've got to flip the narrative here and get the public opinion on your side. Hashtag winning. That way you can conquer a million kingdoms and everyone will just cheer you on and admire how you're increasing the number of women in high-ranking government positions. <laughs> Milo, I like the sound of that. Dahlia, rule, ruler of one million kingdoms. Bwah! Maybe I'll even take a hair. Here's my official recommendation. 
partner with some fourth circle influencers. I'm talking snap stories, posts, giveaways, fake relationships, fake breakups, everything. Ah, I see. I'll partner with the most influential people in the fourth circle, so that when I inevitably murder them, it'll really crush the will of the people. Oh gosh, Dahlia does not seem to be absorbing Milo's social media finesse. Steer these deadly cuties in the right direction. Upload a video of you decimating the population, but with Dangerous Woman by Ariana Grande as background song, so it's all about feeling empowered. Show people you've changed by writing a nice poem about how bad you feel. This is a way countless deaths won't be for nothing. They'll be inspiration for a nice poem. Hashtag winning. A poem? I'm impressed, Hugo. I didn't expect you to suggest something so emotionally magnificent. Dahlia, as your brand manager, I insist you follow Hugo's advice and post a poem about how bad you feel for doing all those murders. Oh, man. Oh, come on, Milo, do I have to? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm expecting the poem to be at least 16 verses, and let's keep it to the um, iambic pentameter. It's the most apologetic meter. Iambic pentameter? What a fearsome opponent! I must admit, I have been bested by I iambic pentameter many times. This is war! Someday I shall defeat your five strange feet. Oh. But Milo... Before I get started, can it be less verses, please? I only have so many emotions to express, and 60% of them are rage and lust for violence. Well, I suppose it can be shorter. Twitter has a character limit, anyway. And threads are a little gauche for this kind of thing. Uh. And Milo, do I have to make it rhyme? It's so hard to rhyme. Nothing rhymes with bloodshed. Mm -hmm. First... Bunk bed rhymes with bloodshed, and second, fine. You can do free verse if you absolutely must, but artistically you're making a huge mistake. Dahlia spends the next 10 minutes on her poem. In that time, she manages to smash 46 different pencils in her verse, in her fist, due to pure frustration. Okay, I'm finally done. It's a haiku, kind of, and it's also the best apology ever. Here goes. <laughs> This is just to say, I'm sorry I killed all those people so quickly. They were probably crying and screaming because they wanted to admire my stri strength more before dying. Forgive me, they were so murderable, their heads were so juicy and stompable. Actually, fuck this, you're welcome, love Dahlia. <laughs> and posted. Now that's flipping the narrative. Aesthetics on point. Dahlia, that was so... Beautiful and emo an emotional masterpiece and totally authentic. Ugh. No matter how terribly this is received by the general public, just take comfort in the fact that I'm proud of you. You did such a good job expressing yourself. You and Milo quickly pull up Hell Twitter. Everyone is outraged and Dahlia is being investigated by internal tribunal for violating the Geneva Convention. You're the saddest bunch I've ever met! What the hell? None of these people are celebrating my righteous victory. Ugh, social media is dumb. I'm gonna go conquer some shit to get the bad taste out of my heart. Well, Hugo, I think we should celebrate a job well done. Nothing satisfies me more than emotional redemption in the form of poetry. Hashtag blessed. Maybe we could write a few together. We could rhyme bloodshed with bunk bed if you know what I mean. Okay, last round. Gonna take a gamble. That weekend you feel like getting wasted, so you visit no none other than one. Hola! You know, when I started making magical drinks, I never thought people would actually come to drink them. But hey, who am I to judge? Anyway, take a look at this one. Okay, we know what the classical palette does, and it's not useful, so we're not gonna go for it. No idea if I got the recipe right. Wanna try it? Otherwise, you always have the mystery box. In case people didn't see, uh, the classical palette changes the pictures at the different locations. Okay, what have we got? Whiskey. I don't think whiskey does anything either. The mystery box, so bold of you. Hope you're happy with it, no refunds. Behold, a potion that looks a lot like whiskey. Its power is to taste and smell like whiskey, nothing else. 
I have the suspicion that I just made whiskey. I like straws. <laughs> Still, it's hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. Well, could be worse. I would have gone for classical if I'd known that I was going to have whiskey. Is there a place where I could just do nothing? Okay. And that brings us to the end of episode one. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.